Hello and welcome to this Bangington session on technical skills, business awareness and commercial focus for the modern accountant. My name is Tim Sutcliffe and I'm Head of Client Relationships at Babington, one of the largest providers of commercial and funded training in the UK. In this session, we'll be exploring developments in the range of skills that the modern accountant needs through the lens of the new AAT syllabus, which launched on the 1st of September. I'm delighted to be joined today by partners and colleagues. So before we get started, let's quickly go around the room for introductions. And uh, we'll start first with you, please, Zoe. Yeah, hello, I'm Zoe Smith. I'm the Regional Account Manager for the East of England AAT. Great, thanks, uh, Zoe. And, and you, Stuart? Hi, Tim. Uh, Stuart Brown from Grant Thornton. I work in uh, Grant Thornton's Talent Solutions team. Great, and, and Adam? So I'm Adam Rustenshaw and I'm Head of Delivery for our Accountancy programmes at Babington and that's focusing on those key technical aspects and apprenticeships. Great, thanks Adam. So um, let's just get, uh, let's just dive straight into today's discussion. Um, Zoe, uh, I mentioned that we're focusing on the new AAT syllabus, so perhaps you can start by giving us your assessment of what's changed in the industry in recent years and how this has driven the design of the new AAT syllabus. Yeah, thank you, Tim. So uh, at AAT, we always change our qualifications sort of typically every three to five years. It has been slightly longer for this one due to the pandemic, but we try to make sure that the qualification is updated to reflect what it is that employers want the, the students to be learning and developing. And back in 2019, we commissioned a research to be taken place by Warwick Economics and Development Limited and Nottingham Trent University. And we asked them to look at the changing role of accounting professions, uh, what the key drivers are for change, how uh, technology is impacting on accounting professionals, and what the skills for success for the future would, would be. So they carried out the research um, doing in consultation with over 530 accounting professionals, businesses globally, uh, and professional um, and, and employers uh, and they carried out 15 interviews and they ran four focus groups with these these professionals um, and also including accounting software developers as well just to try and get from them and consult on them as to how they felt the industry was changing and out of that research some of the highlights uh, showed that the main changes to the role of accounting technician were driven by the emergent, emerging technologies that were coming through and because of the, the automation of tasks and cloud technology, it meant that actually accounting technicians and bookkeepers were doing fewer clerical tasks and they had a much broader, wider role that they had to play within the organisation. It was more analytical and they were having more of an outward facing role. So therefore, um, so they would be coming to do a little bit more of an advisory role maybe within the organisation. Um, they were asking to provide real-time information because of cloud accounting, so they could give that real-time advice on things like tax, cash flows and investments. So really helping their both internal customers as well as their external clients to be able to understand what those figures and the data were that previously they were just providing the, the figures, but now it's explaining what those figures meant in order to make better managerial decisions. So that's really been the, the key driver and the input for the, the changes that we've made to our syllabus. Right, that, that's really interesting, Zoe. And obviously, Stuart, you, you work for Grant Thornton, one of the world's most uh, successful uh, accountancy and advisory um, firms. So th those changes that, that Zoe's talking about, so in terms of the automation of tasks, uh, the role becoming more advisory, is, is that consistent with what you're seeing? Absolutely, Tim. And I think it, it, precisely what Zoe said there, the, the, the advent of big data and AI um, allowing machines to sort of take over some of those time consuming sort of repetitive and I guess now redundant tasks really does, you know, give more scope for accountants at, at all levels to, to, to then start to, to be more responsive to the business and, and, and not just to, to sit in their own silo, but to, you know, interact more with the um, uh, business as well. And of course, having such a a large amount of data uh, to deal with as well brings its own um, uh, problems as well and so you know being able to process that large amount of data and certainly in the interactions that we've had with clients you know there's there's definitely an emphasis on um, on having such a large amount of increased data available um, how to ensure that 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 
that they're measuring uh, the right value and that being uh, intentional with the KPIs that are selected is really, really crucial. You know, so it's, it's great to have that great cloud of data, but being having people that can draw the right conclusions and use the right data and, and use that data in a in a in a proper way is absolutely uh, vital to the success of both the finance function but also to the wider business. Right. Okay. Thank, thanks, Stuart. And so. Um, in terms of the changes that are being made, what what are the practical uh, changes that that students and, and employers will see as part of the new syllabus? Zoe. So, uh, sort of the, the key skills that were identified, as has kind of been mentioned, is making sure that the syllabus is teaching them those analytical skills. So, getting them to be able to understand what the data is saying, being able to interpret it, to be able to look at that trends, influence in making those decisions. So, the skills are things such as critical thinking, problem solving, helping them to develop being curious and inquisitive, because I think that's what Stuart was saying. They're the kind of things that employers want them to be able to see. Those advisory skills, uh, particularly having really strong communication skills both in their written and their verbal communication so that they can convey what the accounting information is saying in a really clear way, in a timely way, in a concise way, particularly to non-financial individuals as well as to, to sort of their internal managers as well. And the use of technology then is something that is, is going to be looked at. Just as Stuart said, it's about big, uh, you know, big data, artificial intelligence, blockchain, as well as things like cybersecurity and making tax digital. So these, these skills and these topics have all been incorporated into uh, the Quals 22 syllabus so that they can develop these key skills that you need for modern accountants. Right, so a couple, one of the things I just pick up on, on there, so a couple of things you've mentioned there, commercial insight, communication, things like that. It's really interesting because obviously lots of people these days now study the AAT qualification via the apprenticeship route. Obviously we all know or well, lots of us will know that when we're studying via an apprenticeship, it's not just about getting our technical qualification. It's about getting those relevant skills and behaviours as well so that, you know, people are becoming rounded individuals and, and not, not just picking up those technical skills. So is that something that AAT has, has consciously done? Have you kind of looking at, at, at those learning outcomes from the apprenticeship as well? Exactly. I think we've worked very closely with the apprenticeship was being developed and because of the employers that we had in those working groups, they were clear about it wasn't just about being able to understand their debits and their credits, but it is having those wider skills was really key in, in what the apprenticeship was developing, making sure they had good communication, they, they took an interest, a personal interest in their own development, making sure they understood the business much wider. And so there's all of these elements that we've now incorporated in, in line with what's been taught within the apprenticeship that's been added to the syllabus. So we have brought out um, four um, key themes that now run throughout each level, so from level one to level four of technology, communication, ethics and sustainability. So they're not new topics, we've always taught them at AAT, but we've probably maybe taught them within just one unit at one level, whereas now these four, four themes of technology, communication, ethics and sustainability are they are first referenced at level one. So they start to be introduced there. Then they're fully introduced once they get to level two. Then in level three, they are developing what these themes mean, how they fit into the workplace. And then at level four, it's much more about what the impact of that is and analysing um, sort of that role in, in a more real life scenario. So it's about making sure that we are kind of embedding it all the way through now, which we think is helping with that development in the same way as those skills are throughout um, sort of the, the different level two, level three and level four of the apprenticeship. Great. So as they're developing the technical skills that, that they're doing in the qualification, because you've got these four themes that are running through, they're really building on those on those on those themes as well. So, so Stuart, I'll, I'll just come back to you again on, on those four themes. Are those are those things that, as as an uh, advisory firm, Grant Thornton see as being important as well? Absolutely, Tim. And I think just to pick up on that point that um, Zoe made about communication, for instance, you know, just as a as a, as a I think that's a, a real key theme that we see running throughout the conversations that we have with clients that that you know it's not good enough anymore just for accountants to be number crunchers you know that they, they, they are really there now to, to provide those valuable insights into the business and, and and that communication of those insights really becomes a key skill for you know for anyone in a uh, in the finance profession and and you know 
cutting out jargon, for instance, when they're communicating with the wider business, just re- you know to make sure that they're getting across, yeah, technical points, but in a in a understandable way, and that there's a two-way flow of communication between you know the finance team relating those insights, but also then the you know the wider business both understanding those insights, but then feeding into perhaps the way those insights can be um, made more viable and, and, and more useful to the business. Right, thank you. And so just to so just to drill down a little bit more into the details, we've heard about some of these themes now, which are really useful and really interesting, but what, what kind of practical changes are you making to the qualifications? Are we, are we losing modules? Are we getting new modules? How, how, how's it going to work? Yes, yeah, so just about what's not changed is the fundamental, core fundamentals of bookkeeping management accounting, finance accounting, taxation, they're still there because that's still really clear that that's what all accountants are going to need to know. But what we have done is uh, we've combined some of the units. So the research said that actually one of the things they suggested is making the AT qualification a bit more more tangible to a student so they can see in what would actually be happening as far as the tasks that they'd be completing in the workplace. So where we've got activities and tasks that are related that somebody would, would do as part of the job role to actually to teach that all in, and assess it all in one unit. So uh, we've com- combined advanced bookkeeping and final accounts prep that were two units that we had at level three to make one financial accounting unit. So then the students are seeing the entire process for financial accounting. So looking for the extended trial balance to making end of year adjustments, preparing those financial statements for sole traders and partnerships. So they're seeing the whole picture uh, and then make that delivery and the learning for the student much more fluid then. So we've combined that those units then at level three. And we've done a similar thing also then at level four, where we had our uh, management accounting. We had two separate units. We had a budgeting unit and we had a decision and control unit. So we brought that all together under one uh, applied management accounting unit so that those fundamental uh, concepts and principles of management accounting about planning, decision uh, and control are all assessed under one unit. So. Um, Previously, because of the fact that they were two separate units, there was quite a lot of crossover of some of the topics that were were taught. So we've removed that duplication, which has made that unit, although it's one big unit, uh, overall the guided learnings uh, learning hours have come down because it's now now one combined unit. So that's some of the the things that we've changed there. One of the the key themes, um, new topics that we brought in is business, actually. So we've got a new, new pillar business pillar. So we have business units that we've introduced at level two and level three that then builds on to what they'd be doing with the business unit at level four. And this is just to be able to give our students that wider understanding of the business environment, uh, developing those additional uh, professional communication skills that we talked about that were so important, that were identified, and then helping to them to see things on uh, such things about um, elements of contract, employment and company law, um, understanding more that the um, um, different technologies and sustainability is how they affect the organisation, looking more about economics particularly, different business environments. Um, So just helping them to be a little bit more prepared by having those additional business units throughout the AT qualification as well. Right, okay. So Adam, I want to bring you in at this point because we've heard quite a bit now from uh, Zoe and and Stuart in terms of the changes to the AAT syllabus. how is Babington reacting to this? What, what what are you doing in terms of our new syllabus delivery? Yeah, I mean, there's been substantial work surrounding the new syllabus. And I think what one of the keys that um, at Babington, what we do do is we utilise those latest learning methodologies and really do focus on putting the learner experience at the core of what we do. And by working closely with Grant Thornton and AAT, and we can really contextualise that content to make sure it's fit for specific businesses and specific industries. So in terms of the updates to our accountancy programmes of AAT, this is a great example, as what we've recently done is invested in some additional learning content that will really support learners through the professional aspect and the apprentice elements of the qualification and really focus drilling down on that wider learner experience. And, you know, ultimately, running through to achieve the full apprenticeship standard or the professional qualification um, if they were doing that as a standalone option. Right, so that's really interesting. So AAT are having a big syllabus change, making some really key changes to their 
to their program. And what you're saying is Babington are doing something similar as well. We've, we're not just kind of tweaking the content we've got. We've we've got we've got brand new content to go with the go with the new IAT syllabus. Yeah, absolutely. Grand. And in terms of in terms of the delivery that we have, um, how, how does that work? Is it is it a mixture of, of live content and and uh, and, and tutor support? Just, just talk us through how, how it works. Yeah, of course. So we've got really a full blended suite and a full blended option. So obviously we work in collaboration with um, Grant Thornton that can really support and bring those real industry insights to life. Um, we've got dedicated virtual classrooms or workshops that we deliver. Um, on a regular basis. We've got one to one support and we've also got these brand new additional resources um, in terms of the e-learning aspects. So it's right. a real full blended approach. Right. And and Stuart, when you're talking to, to, to clients, obviously we have this great partnership between uh, Barrington and, and Grant Thornton. When when you're talking to to your clients about about the delivery and the, the programme, how, how it works, what are the key areas that that you highlight in terms of how how Grant Thornton um, assists the program? Yeah, I think it, it's it's as um, Adam touched upon. It's it's really I guess adding those insights that we get from interacting with thousands of clients on a, a daily basis. And and as uh, Zoe said earlier on, you know she's done lots of work at AAT, having focus groups and so on. We're at the coal face day in day out talking to clients and, and 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 as a wider firm you know we do take all of those interactions and sort of uh, coalesce them into you know some real valuable insights and 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 we really bring those to the um uh the program as a whole and and i think it's really interesting that, that the themes that zoe and aat have, have have drawn out are exactly the themes that we see within the industry that are, that are really kind of making an impact and uh, and i guess require that that valuable change to the uh, syllabus as well and I think it's and also around the actual delivery the the cadence of delivery as well um, clearly these days post pandemic we're all living in this sort of virtual world that none of us I don't think ever expect I think it's it's great that um, Babington have responded accordingly and 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 and, and have really changed the cadence of the um, delivery of the modules as well to correspond you know to to some of the changes that IAT have made to the syllabus I mean Adam do you want to speak about that a little bit about the uh, difference in the delivery model yeah of course I mean so in, in terms of delivery model and obviously often that um that blended approach and um, what we've obviously we work closely also with IAT to offer both the apprenticeship and the professional qualifications so it's really there to support individuals through the career pathway whether it's from entry level and people have just got a keen interest in getting used to accounting through to those that really work with interpreting and um, analysing that financial data, perhaps at a more senior level um, to kind of produce that full rounded finance individual. And in terms of our delivery, working obviously closely um, with yourselves at Grant Thornton and Stuart, we can really focus on those key concepts and, and like individualise that learning experience and really put that context behind it. And again, I think it's really vital. I think some of the things that AAT are changing as well to the syllabus really make make learners, particularly let's say on the level four program, in a in a great place to then progress on to perhaps higher roles. And, and I know we emphasise a lot um, in the program that we've designed with uh, Babington. The, the, uh, on the level seven programs going up into the SEMA and ACCA territory now, that that we want to produce some real leaders within finance teams and clearly to be a leader in a finance team which is absolutely the expectation now uh, from businesses you need to have those 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 really key skills that Zoe outlined there so you know I think the AAT syllabus now really provides a, 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 an amazing platform and a, and, a, and a great foundation for people then to go on to to um, more senior roles within their uh, their teams and you know really progress their careers and uh, and Adam, I'm just thinking. Obviously, we've the, the new syllabus came in on the first of September. So anybody who comes onto a onto a Babington program uh, now is going onto this new syllabus. But is there any impact on on new learners or people who are already on programs studying for the qualifications? Yeah, I think obviously the new syllabus is just going to kind of strengthen um, the delivery. Um, overall, we can introduce some of those new concepts um, into the existing 
uh, syllabus as well. But in terms of other learners impacted, so they're not going to be impacted. And I think the important thing is for those existing learners, you're still going to have the same level of support, the same level of resources as the new learners. I mean, it's all going to run in line with the criteria and the syllabus that they're studying. I think another key concept around this is we do actually have a full process in place and um, where relevant to transition any learners from the obviously uh, the former syllabus onto the, the new syllabus. So um, yeah, in terms of impact, it's going to be minimum for students and obviously they're going to get all the benefits um, of this new additional content uh, and really bringing it to life um, and, and addressing those elements. Great, so people are already on programme with us, currently studying through AAT Level 3 or Level 4. They just continue as they are. They're not going to be affected. I suppose if someone, you know, someone might go on a break in learning for whatever reason, if that was the case and the end of their programme was delayed, they don't need to worry. We'll have transitional arrangements in place to help them. And anybody coming onto one of the new programmes, they will just they'll, they'll just seamlessly join that and the new new delivery that we have. Absolutely. Right. OK. Well, um, I hope everybody has uh, enjoyed today's session was we've covered quite a little bit of ground we've heard from zoe about the new aat syllabus and the changes they're making uh, and we've heard from adam and stewart in terms of babington's delivery uh, and, and the partnership with grant thornton and the benefits that that brings to people on program um thank you for for, for joining us as i say i hope it's been useful to you um if this is something that you're interested in, you can hopefully you can see my details on screen now. You can you can contact me uh, to, to have a discussion uh, about how Babington might be able to help you, whether that's um, uh, recruiting and training new staff into your business or upskilling people who are already in the workforce. Um, or if you're already working with Babington, you might want to contact the, the account manager that, that you're already working with. Um, so thank you ever so much, uh, Zoe. Stuart and Adam for joining us today uh, and we'll, we'll hopefully see you all soon.